Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows Dub Sub, and I have invented it just last week for a reason. This is part of my path towards the plugin 2 Tape 7. So the deal with Dub Sub is this is a very old algorithm I've got. It works kind of like this. You have a kind of low frequency oscillation thing and you can add audio to it. For instance, here we have audio using this little head bump control, which is what's going to show up in the plug-in to tape 7. This is all wet. Thing is, we can add more. And the more we add, the more we get into a sort of space where it's saturated, it's kind of intense. And that was the original uh, dub sub, as well as things like Fathom 5 and so on. This has been around for a while, and that's what went into the initial to tape plugin. This is what the head bump is made out of. And you see, as you continue to push it, it just keeps getting more intense and saturated. And that's because it's not really a filter so much as it is a kind of way of adding to a unstable bass generator. That's what a, a dub sub has been, is this unstable bass generator. And I'm going to do a thing with this head frequency. Interestingly, head frequency is actually measured in hertz. You do get to dial in exact frequencies on it. When we do this, we start to hear that it sounds distinctly distorted, and that's part of why it's going to sound like a head bump in 2 Tape 7. The way it works is if you push it very gently, you get extremely low frequencies, but then as you keep pushing it more, you start distorting, like this. Now, one of the things about this particular algorithm is that if you just keep it all by itself without doing any filtering on it, what you get is a bunch of DC offset. And that is a bit of a curse in older versions of 2Tape and why I've kept evolving it as much as I have. Like, 2Tape 7 is literally the most recent in a long line of these plugins. And that's because I had to keep working on the low frequency stuff because it would let extreme lows through. However, this time around I have a real interesting technique behind it. And that is this. We've got our wonderful little head frequency thing here, which is going to center around the frequency that we've given all the way down to 25 hertz and all the way up to 200. We can dial back the head bump. Notice that this, the faint thumping we've got here. If we push it really hard, it's obvious, but then if we turn it down, not that much of a difference. And that's because it's a really low frequency thumping. And as such, a very small amounts of head bump will start bringing that out. But there's more, because we usually use this in the context of a dry wet. And this is actually a full on dry wet where you can balance between dry, wet, or 50 50. Some of my plugins, like uh, reverb plugins and things, I let you go up to full volume for both of them. But in this one, it has to be 50 50 for this reason.
it'll combine the volume of the bass with the volume of the head bump and get up to a fairly sim similar uh, volume level. Uh, this all by itself is not a tape saturation or a flutter or a uh, tape bias or any of the things that I'm working on, but this does have this bit going on and there's an interesting side effect. As you move the head bump frequency around. Like 70 hertz is a fairly normal head drum frequency. We can also use a drum kit, for instance, full dry. You can hear that this basically sounds like uh, room mics for the drums because that's what it is. But then as we start adding the head bump, and the head bump sounds like this. We can balance it to have lots more of those low frequencies in there. And we can even move the head bump frequency around a little bit. For a very deep kick drum in there. Oh, I've also got a guitar. And you can move the head bump up to bring that lows in. It. But there's one interesting thing about this particular arrangement, and that is the filtering that I'm doing on this uh, unusual head bump technique that I use is much better than it's ever been as far as getting rid of that tendency to hang on to a little bit of uh, DC offset. And that's because it is stacked by quad band passes. So here's the thing. Band passes are pretty good for that sort of thing. It will take away the extreme low frequencies. You don't always go about stacking them, though, because they do some unusual things to the frequency response. And that's the case for my parametric plugin. I can't remember whether that's come out yet or not. I think maybe it has. Um, that's going to be part of console X when that comes out. When you stack up band passes in this way and then recombine them with dry, as we've done, in fact, I can just explain this further without listening to more audio. When you stack up the band passes in that way and then combine them with dry to include them, you start getting an interesting effect. The way they operate, they, as you continue to make them steeper, not by just applying the uh, band pass and steepening the Q, or the resonance frequency of it, the Q, but by increasingly running more of them in series, layers of filters, what we get is funny phase anomalies. And those phase anomalies have an effect where they start to notch out frequencies around the frequency that you're boosting. So I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures now. What you're seeing is a uh, I think it's Jack and Dino, the, um, a famous engineer who has had a lot of time working on vinyl records and, and tape and all of that kind of stuff. And he saw fit to measure a bunch of frequency response curves off of tape machines he had. And you'll notice that there's this tendency to have the big old head bump area, but then exactly an octave up there's this little notch, and that's off of the real tape machines. Now, there is no tape in DubSub. In fact, DubSub 2 isn't even labeled tape of any kind. But because the way that the doubled uh, bi-quad bandpass filters stack up, I've also got them very slightly offset, offset by if the frequency is... Um, 
if we're doing a cancellation of an octave up, well, the offsets I have are literally one semitone. Uh, so it's a very small offset, but it smooths it out and makes the frequency sound better. But then that notch there is a factor of what the frequency we use, well, frequency, what the resonant factor is that we use for these biquads, because you can have the resonant factor be extremely broad. It can be a really, really wide resonance, and then it lets through just about everything. Or it can be an extremely narrow resonance, like, you know, 0 0.7071 is a Butterworth roll-off. So a bandpath a band pass at that resonance is like reasonably steep without being wildly exaggerated. And less than that, it starts making stuff really shallow. So I tried 0 0.7071 for the Q factor of my doubled up, slightly offset biquad filters to see where the notch came in. Because there's going to be a notch when you increase the resonance and stack these on top of each other and then start bringing it in using a dry wet. And in fact, the 0 0.7071 resonance, which would be Butterworth if you were doing a low pass filter, that wasn't actually the correct amount. It did not line up properly. And really shallow roll-offs also didn't line up properly and getting it really steep tended to bring the notches in so close to this is something that you can do with air windows parametric it bring the notches in so close that they were no longer lining up with what the real tape machines do of having a head bump and then you have a little notch exactly one octave up and that seems consistent although the notches move around like crazy depending upon what tape machine you're using and you'll never guess what frequent, what uh, resonant setting I needed to use in order to make this particular thing. Okay, I'll just tell it's it's the golden ratio. It is in fact 0 0.618, etc., etc., etc. So I just kind of continued the fraction out and used the full-on golden ratio to the nth degree, and that's dub sub, and that's going to be the uh, head bump that goes into two tape seven. But as I sometimes do, if I come up with something that's really cool, sometimes I will scramble to give it to you immediately. And I hope you like it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.